Hi guys, it's Shadow Boy here, um, and in today's demonstration, I'm going to tell you how to perform what's known as stroking magic. Now, this type of magic is normally performed on a stone. There's normally a selected stone that is given in order to perform this. Now, stroking magic stems out into two different variations to heal or to harm, and that's only the two variations that I have seen. However, if anybody has seen different in terms of stroking magic, please let me know because I would be really, really interested. Um, as I said, it's normally done on a stone as well um, and it's selected out for the particular type of charm that you're going to do. Normally, this is my stroking stone as well. It's normally flat, smooth, sort of pebble, rounded, very smooth, because you've got to remember, you're going to be stroking this as well. Now I'll give you these two spells and then I'll talk a bit. The first spell is the way in which to do healing on it. So I'm going to take this reference from Gemma Gary, Traditional Witchcraft, the Cornish Book of Ways. Stroking magic is a technique of magical healing very popular with traditional Cornish practitioners. Stroking stones are employed here either to soothe away pain and illness by smoothing it over the afflicted part of the patient's body or in case of absent healing when the patient is not actually present, the witch, forming a link with the patient, will hold the stone in the left hand and stroke it rhythmically as if it were the afflicted body part whilst muttering a healing chant, such as the following popular charm. This dispel the tie in tone, flesh to flesh and bone to bone, sinew to sinew and vein to vein, and let them all be whole again. The left hand will charm away the illness, whilst the right administers the regenerative healing force. Magical workings of this kind are often kept up for hours at a time. Representation of various body parts formed from lead or clay were also kept by some practitioners, specifically for stroking during acts of absent healing. Now, um, in terms of stroking magic for healing, I can only speak of my own personal experience. Um, when I do that charm that I just said, this to spell the iron time, flesh to flesh, bone to bone, sinew to sinew, vein to vein, let them all be whole again. I put the person's full name. So instead of let them all be whole again, let Joe Blogs be whole again. Um, you know, and I, I keep in my head um, that person either happy or healthy, running around actively. So for instance, if somebody has a bad back, imagine somebody dancing on a night out or having a lot of fun, you know, and moving and being happy and comfortable with moving. Um, an example of stroking magic, and I'll, I'll just give you an example here of healing, is uh, we recent, well, unfortunately, a couple of months ago, a little boy had a brain hemorrhage. He had a problem in his brain, he had internal bleeding. And this was really, really dangerous, and and it was it was just horrible, really. And it was a little boy that I knew of, so I got straight on it with stroking magic. Now, obviously, the person wasn't there present, so what I'd done was I sat there and I linked in with that little boy. I had a picture of him, and I imagined this to be the area of his brain that was affected. Now, it was coming up to Christmas at the time, so I envisioned him on Christmas Day, opening up his presents and, and being fine and everything was okay with him. Um, and, and again, just sort of constantly focusing on that person being whole again, being, you know, being okay, you know. So that's just an example. Or, for instance, somebody riding a bicycle, happy or healthy, you know, something like that. Or if somebody has a mental illness, maybe imagine them being a lot more balanced within themselves. You know, you get the picture. But just keep within your head and focus on that person being fine. Now, healing magic, when it comes to stroking stones, will go on for hours, and it does. With, like, the stroking magic that I have done, it has gone on for hours and hours and hours, and sometimes, you know, you just sat there and you're thinking, oh my god, <laughs> and it can, you know, it can get a bit like that. However, it is very powerful in healing. If you think about it, if you're stroking, you're layering care onto that thing, you're layering... Um, affection, you know, you're you're putting your your pure affection, your your love into that. Stroking is subtle, but it's very very powerful. It can heal many a things. Stroking magic. So that's the way that you can use stroking magic for healing. 
Um, now we go on to a more malevolent act known as cursing stones. Charging a stone with malevolence is an ancient Celtic method of delivering a curse. Charge the stone by holding it in your hands whilst allowing yourself to be engulfed by feelings of rage, anger, jealousy or hatred. The stone will store this emotion. So basically, hold the stone and project everything bad, everything negative and awful, all your anger, all your hate, all your rage, you project it into this stone. This is... This method is quite ferocious, so you've got to even scream, shout it, you know, go for it, you know, really put everything into that. When the charging is complete, terminate the process by setting the stone down and consciously changing your train of thought. So consciously think completely different from the end of the spectrum. Reserve the stone for future use. Should one wish to curse somebody of or something, hold the stone within your hands, stroking it whilst turning it with a shins and murmuring curses. So you stroke it in the direction of that person, turning it anti-clockwise, going back, anti-clockwise, turning it back, back with your left hand, stroking it to that person, turning it, stroking it, muttering curses. Do not use the same stone as you would a healing stone. Keep stones for healing magic and healing stroking magic completely separate from cursing stones um cursing stones are kept completely separate although mine's black and looks like it should be used for cursing magic it's not but anyway um so yeah that's that's part one um one reference is taken from one of Gemma Gary's books. Another reference in terms of this cursing stones, where I got it from, it's quite a well-known thing. Um, can I also add as well that invocation that um, Gemma Gary has put, this to spell the tie and tone, flesh to flesh, bone to bone, sinew to sinew, vein to vein, let them all be whole again. That's actually Anglo-Saxon. That's a very, very old charm that you're using there. So this is... The magic I have given you is traditional folk magic, for healing or for harming. So keep your stones separate from cursing and healing. Do not even put them in the same bag because you don't want anything to rub off on, you know, you don't want to, you know, somebody who's like done something absolutely terrible, you don't want to send them healing accidentally. You know, keep it completely separate. Um, so yeah, there are many other different stones that you use in traditional witchcraft, but again, We'll talk about them at a later time but yeah over and out and i hope you enjoyed these two little charms in part one of my series of witchcraft and folk magic